Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Max, and today I'm very excited to be unboxing the Sony ZV E10 camera. I actually picked this package up over the holidays and it comes with a 16 to 50 millimeter lens. And I'm very excited to start recording content with this device. Previously, I was shooting all my content with my iPhone when I was away from my desk, or with the camera built into my iMac, which you're actually seeing right now. This, for obvious reasons, lacked the quality that I was targeting, particularly when it came to loading scenarios, like if I wanted to record at night, which is tough when I have two kids and a day job, it really limited the time that I was able to get good quality shots with this camera. But when I started my YouTube journey, I wasn't quite ready to jump into the investment that is having a standalone camera. It has reached a point, however, where I'm doing this frequently enough and I was ready to make the next step and I used some of the deals over the holidays to make this purchase and basically take the next step forward in content quality. I did a ton of research on entry level cameras that would be good for the type of videos that I was shooting. I didn't want to break the bank with my purchase, and the Sony ZV-E10 ended up being the clear best choice for an entry-level model for producing videos such as the content you see on my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the box and see what this camera is all about. All right, immediately looking at the box, this thing is compact. I mean, look at it compared to the size of my hand. You know that this is going to be a pretty small camera. So just diving right in. Paperwork, directions. Our mic cover. We have our battery. We have our outlet for our USB charging. It's nice that this product actually comes with that because I feel like this day and age, you're usually left on your own with USB. We have our USB cable itself. We have a strap for the camera. And finally, we have the camera itself. Now the version I got specifically came with the 16 to 50 millimeter lens. Eventually I will likely replace this so that I can have more wide range of use and quality, but this is gonna be my starter lens to get started with. It does make the camera $100 more expensive, so you can buy the Sony ZV-E10 without the lens if you're planning on just using your own if you have one for $100 cheaper. But since I don't have anything, this is gonna be my starting setup. Obviously no battery in right now, so turning on and off doesn't do anything but you can see it has the screen, which will make doing videos for YouTube and vlogs a lot easier. And it really is this compact size. I might even end up adding a grip to this because this is pretty small to hold on to. And see over here is where we have all our ports and connections, one for a mic if you happen to get that. And then here we have another set of outlets, including display ports, charge ports, and a headphone jack. And down here is where your battery goes in. I already placed that in there. And then a place to put your memory card. I do have some accessories that I'm gonna review for this channel as well and recommend, but we'll save that for another video. But yeah, very excited to get started using this product. I'm really hoping that this takes my video quality to the next level and really improve the content that I post here on my channel. So there you have it. I'm so far extremely happy with the camera out of the box and all the initial shots that I've used it for. And to make a point of it, let's transition from my iMac camera right now to the Sony. And there you are. So, so far I'm loving the design of this camera. It's got a sleek, compact design, which for someone who grew up with Hi8 tape cameras, mini DV cameras, it's really a huge leap forward technologically to have such power quite literally in the palm of your hand. I think it's got a great user-friendly layout that would be appealing to both beginners and intermediate users who are trying to take a step forward in their quality of the content that they're shooting, both for personal and professional uses. The three inch display, which is flipped around and I'm staring at right now, is great for vlogging purposes and will be ideal for the purposes of shooting for this channel. Some other key features to consider is that it comes with a 2.4 megapixel APS-C sensor delivering crisp and vibrant images with a real-time tracking and focus functionality that's able to keep the subject in view no matter your movement. I can show that here now by taking this phone back here 
and putting it forward and seeing how it focuses on my phone versus my face as I put it into view and then pull it away where it focuses back onto my face. For video purposes, it shoots 4K at 30 frames per second if you want a real crisp image or else 1080p up to 120 frames per second if you want to opt for some smoother motions when shooting more action-oriented sequences. It does also come with image stabilization technology, but I've yet to test that out and I'm excited to see what that looks like. So there's a ton of other specs that I need to learn and play with, so I'll probably shoot a follow-up video to this going over a full in-depth review of what that's like and my recommendations, depending on the type of content you're shooting. For now, this is just an unboxing and first impression video. I did, however, experiment with this camera. I took a couple shots around the area that I live, so I'll throw those up now so you can see the kind of quality that you get out of this camera. further evidence of the quality, I actually shot the video that I put up last week of unboxing the Amazon Fire HD tablet with this camera. So definitely a lot to learn and how to manage the settings, especially with lighting, but that was my first foray with this to see what that looked like. And so far, I'm very impressed, particularly with the audio I'm getting out of it. I do have a third party mic installed, but similar to a full up review, I will probably do an entire video dedicated to my recommended day one accessories for this particular device. So definitely look for that soon and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing that type of content. So yeah, overall, I'm extremely happy with my purchase. It's exactly what I'm looking for for my channel, and I think it's really gonna take my videos to the next level in terms of quality. I think it's an excellent entry-level option for someone who's either starting to make content or someone who's been doing it for a while but really wants to take the next step in that higher definition video to get more crisp images than they had previously. Now, what I will point out is that a lot of videos that I saw reviewing this camera talked about it as an affordable option. This camera was $699 during the holiday discounts, and now that the holidays are over, it's back to $798 in the configuration that I currently have. Very few people would call that affordable. Now, what I would say about this though, it's probably the cheapest price that I personally would recommend investing in if you're buying a camera. Anything out there that costs less than this probably isn't worth the investment to begin with. So if you are thinking about getting a camera and this is still slightly above your price range, I would recommend holding out and saving more until you can get to this entry level since you probably could get just as good of quality shooting with your iPhone for a cheaper option. This is a great option when you're beginning that journey to actually have a dedicated device for video recording or photography. All that to say, I'm extremely happy with this purchase and excited what this means for my channel and my content going forward. But I'm excited to hear what all of you think too. Can you tell the noticeable difference in the video at the beginning of this versus what I'm shooting right now? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, that's all I really had to talk about today. If you did like this content and you wanna see more, please like, comment, and subscribe to see more. Definitely wanna do a lot more on this camera and how it's working out for me on top of my usual tests on tech content. So definitely look out for that and subscribe if you're interested. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.